Do you want to know more about weathering and detailing freight cars? Well, why don't you stick around and watch this segment, see how we do on a mine scope model road. This is our secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back to the paint shop. So this month on the paint shop, um, I thought I would take some tank cars and uh, weather up some tank cars and detail them up for everybody. Uh, I know that uh, people in the past have expressed interest, so I figure uh, this is a good month to do it uh, because we're, you know, it kind of coincides with our operations uh, series kicking off uh, and dealing with hazardous material. So, you know, um, the questions come up uh, is how do I denote uh, which cars have hazardous materials on board? Um, and so what I do is on my waybills, if you look here, um, you'll see the little highlighted portion. Uh, I put the DOT classification number and then I highlight it so the operators can see it. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to go through with some of these tank cars that just came up uh, on this session uh, last month. Uh, I'm going to pick a, a group of six out and we're going to weather them up and then we'll put placards on them. So the placards I'm using are for Microscale decals. Uh, it's number 60-840. It's hazardous material placards for freight cars from 1984 and on. So uh, yeah, it's a good little set. Comes with a little uh, a little legend in there to tell you which ones are which. Uh, some of them have numbers or they give you the generic cards. Uh, so you don't need to worry about numbers depending on what materials you're shipping. The other thing that we're going to try this month is, you know, rail fanning over the last couple of weeks. Um, I noticed, you know, there's this kind of like, um, rust that kind of like forms in the paint on the tops of tank cars and it kind of it's not really bleeding or running it's just there and it looks like it's in the paint so um, I'm gonna try experimenting uh, I've been trying over the last uh, couple weeks with some uh, pan pastels and some artist sponges so uh, I think I got a good process down and we're gonna try it on a couple of these tank cars so uh, why don't you check it out and see if you like it and tell me what you think and then all the cars get uh, sealed up with uh, testers dull coat. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to try this time around is uh, I got the complete microscale uh, decal set. So we're going to be using the microsol, the micro set, and then we're going to use the micro flat, which is a uh, ultra flat sealing, uh, kind of like a clear coat. Uh, so I'm going to try that out and see how that works. And the last thing. Um, I have come to a determination that uh, this series here, the paint shop, I'm going to put on hold uh, for the foreseeable future. Don't really know when. Uh, number one is uh, I want to devote the little bit of time I have right now to layout construction. I got to get back. I have lots of work that needs to be done. Secondly, which it's kind of not a bad thing, is I kind of ran out of projects. Uh, yeah, I have nothing really to do right now. I have to acquire some uh, lots of parts and cars and decals, and uh, yeah, I'm not ready for any more projects right now. So uh, I'm going to put it on hold. And uh, you know, the uh, paint shop playlist is pretty long right now, um, so I'll let those videos out there soak and uh, see how that does. Um, the other thing is, you know, maybe I might produce a couple of uh, videos and throw them up there indiscriminately you know as, as they are um, of me putting together uh, weathering buildings and stuff like that uh, we'll see because uh, I always said that this playlist wasn't just about freight cars but uh, it's kind of turning into it but so um, yeah so unfortunately uh, this will be the last uh, paint shop for a while uh, locomotive shops gonna continue I still have a couple more projects that I can do uh, and produce some videos but uh, I think also the time on that series may be limited but we'll see so, all right, everybody, uh, enough of me talking because I know you guys want to get into the project. So uh, go ahead and watch the video and I'll see you afterwards. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the tank cars in the spray booth. I'm going to do a nice coating of uh, Model Flex sand, uh, diluted down with a little bit of alcohol, just to kind of fade everything and give it a little dusty appearance. So the main thing to remember when you're uh, airbrushing your tank cars is to remember that there's no underframes under the tanks. 
So make sure you pay attention and get some good spray underneath the tank to represent well, the weather that kicks up underneath when the tank car goes down the rails. So this little tank car has a story. Um, this is one of my oldest running freight cars that I have. Uh, this is an old roundhouse kit that I got from a model rarity show way back in the 90s and I've had it with me ever since. So time to put a little weathering on it. So I have to admit, Atlas makes some superb tank cars. Uh, this is actually an Atherin car. Uh, it's got a little less detail. It the, doesn't have all the piping and end rails, and so it holds up really well. Um, the Atlas cars are gorgeous cars, but they just don't hold up well to operating when you're touching the cars and stuff. It, you'll notice that some of the rails on the Atlas cars get bent and all that stuff. But with these Atherin cars, um, they hold up really well, so they're a great tank car for the money. Okay, so now we're going to get on to uh, this rust effect. Um, so I'm using Pan Pastels. Uh, this little uh, device I'm using here is an eye makeup uh, applicator. I find it's good to put the Pan Pastels on, and then later I'll come back with a uh, makeup sponge, and it kinds of the makeup sponge blends everything and kinds of thins it out and, and allows me to kind of control the Pan Pastel more than the eye makeup applicator. So this eye makeup applicator, it's a little bulky, so it's hard to get in and around the rails. Uh, when you use the makeup applicator sponge, it's a little easier to get in closer. Okay, so that last shot, that was the finished product on the black car. As you can see, it just, it really didn't turn out as bright as I expected it to. Uh, when you hit it with the dull coat, it kind of faded in with the black paint. So now I'm getting started on the white tank car. I went into this with a lot of trepidation because I was very worried that I would overdo it and overwhelm the white paint. Um, you know, to my surprise, it was actually a lot easier to do on the white car than I expected. retrospect after finishing this car and hitting it with the dull coat and all the blending I probably should have taken that top walkway assembly off so that I could make the rust effect more uniform because I came in with some weathering powders to try and you know blend it all together but it wasn't a perfect match um, so that's probably the best tip I could give to you when you're doing this is take the time to go ahead and take that walkway off it'll, it'll look a lot better in the end So I found this makeup sponge to be a very good tool to use to kind of blend it and move all that uh, weathering uh, pastels around and, and kind of just make it look more uniform. So the eye makeup uh, applicator and the uh, 
makeup sponge. They're readily available at Walmart. They're very inexpensive. You can usually get them in a large pack for you know, very inexpensive. Uh, I highly recommend that you don't go to your wife's makeup drawer and take these. They will not be happy. Trust me, gentlemen. Just take your time, go to Walmart, buy them. They're very inexpensive. So I'm very happy with the final outcome here. Um, I'm gonna take it over to the spray booth and hit it with some dull coat now. Uh, very surprised that it did not fade a whole lot uh, on the white car. So uh, very easy to do. Uh, go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, I think you'll like it. Okay, so this is a nail brush. Uh, Jim K turned me on to these. They're actually used for uh, when ladies get manicures and pedicures to do the real detailed paint work on the nails. Uh, very nice little brush. Uh, you can usually get them in packs of three and yeah, they, they work perfect for this. So I'm using some uh, oil, uh, artist oils and some turpenoid. So I put a little streak on there and then I take a nice flat brush and streak it down. Always have a micro brush on hand, clean micro brush in case you make a goof. You can dip it in the turpenoid and kind of clean it off. So that's why I'm holding that micro brush on my teeth. Uh, very happy with the outcome here, uh, just to get some rust streaks and make it look like rust is kind of running down the side of the tank car or even some chips in the paint are rusting through. Okay, so I'm gonna add some rush streaks to my roundhouse car. Um, you know, looking back, I probably should have went with the weathering powders to try to achieve this effect. This uh, this technique here kind of faded with the black paint as well, so it didn't stand out as much as I had wanted it to. Uh, still though, when you get up close and look at it, you can see there's a little bit of rust. So uh, yeah, overall, it came out really good. Okay, so the last little weathering technique is I'm gonna come here with my weathering powders now, kind of blend everything together, hit the walkways that I didn't get done. And this car here, I didn't do any of the other techniques too, so I'm gonna hit it with some weathering powders just to bring it all together. And uh, you know, that when I do a group of six or 10, I kind of bounce back and forth and I'll do like two cars where I do one technique and two cars where I do another and I mix and match. So you, you don't get a uniform look in your fleet. So that's the key is to just try a little bit on each different car. So uh, yeah, very happy with the way they came out. And again, you know, I'm, when I'm doing the weathering powders, I'm also hitting it with the dull coat uh, just to seal it all in. Uh, I know that a lot of people out there say that, you know, with the weathering powders, you don't need to because it has that adhesive in it. I seriously find over handling, you know, when you're moving cars on and off the layout, it kind of rubs and dull coat, uh, it, it really keeps it sealed in. So I just go ahead and do it anyway. Notice this little car, uh, it got a little peculiar pattern to it when I was putting on the weathering powders. 
Uh, and that was because of the terpenoid that I used to do the streaking effect. So it was kind of neat looking. I, I left it the way it was and I was like, yeah, that's pretty neat. So it adds more variety to the fleet. Okay, so here we are getting started putting the placards on. Um, I'm using the micro set to prepare the surface. Then I put the decal in, I let it set for a few minutes. Then I come back with the micro saw to soften up the decal and have it lay down flat. And then I'll let it uh, dry for a good 45 minutes to an hour. And then I come back with the uh, micro scale uh, clear flat and seal up the decal. You don't actually see me putting in the, uh, the clear flat here because yeah, I let it dry. Now I'm actually using the proper placards for the materials that are in the tank cart off of the waybill. I just googled it and found out which placard go with which material. All right, everyone, so there you go. That's how we did it. Uh, pretty happy with the project. Um, I think the Pan Pastel Rust effect came out really good. Um, I, there's a little learning uh, curve. Um, number one, I think on the white tank cars, I should have taken the ladders off and then done it uh, because you know, it was just very hard to get in around the valve assembly and the walkways to kind of blend it all seamlessly. So it was kind of like a little, it's like a clean area under the walkway. So retrospect, probably should have done that. Secondly, on the on the white tank cars, I probably should have brought it down over the end caps just a little bit, just to kind of blend it all more seamlessly. Um, you know, this is all looking back at it after a couple days of finishing it. Um, the the rust effect on the black cars is very very subtle. Uh, doesn't really show up as brightly as uh, I thought it would. Um, I even added some um, a weathering powders on top of the pan pastel to kind of bring it up. But as soon as you hit it with the dull coat, it just just kind of really fades into the black so uh yeah so i think it's um it was a very good effect um the decals came out really nice um they're they're, they're on there really good i love that three-step process uh you know now that i have brand new full bottles and all of the components of the uh, decaling uh set um really makes a difference in your decals because if you noticed um i applied the decals to a dull coated surface and you know, a lot of people out there are like, no, don't do that because they'll silver. Um, yeah, but when it seems like when I'm using this three-step process here from Microscale, there is no silvering and they're on there too. They're not going to flake off and rub off like what happened to the, um, the gondolas. I didn't seal them properly and the one, the couple of the sides, the, the, the placards fell off. So, so far that set, it was well worth the couple bucks to uh, buy it. The other thing with the placards, uh, they do tell you uh, four sides one on each side, uh, long side, and then uh, one on each end cap. Um, I kind of forewent the ends because I'm trying to save as many placards as I can to do more cars. And you know, when they're close coupled together, you really don't see them anyway. Um, but maybe in the future we'll go back and we'll add them after I get all the cars done that I want to get done and make sure I have enough placards. So. All right, so that's going to put a wrap on this one for the paint shop. Um, 
had a lot of fun doing this project. I hope you enjoyed following. I've had a lot of fun producing this series, showing you all the techniques that I do with the, uh, the, the all the different freight cars and stuff. Um, I really thank you all for following along. Um, and for right now, I'm going to say this is goodbye for now on the paint shop. But uh, maybe you'll see some videos pop up when they do. But uh, yeah, it was fun doing it. And I hope you all enjoyed following along. So with that being said, if you're watching this video for the first time, you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the channel because we're always producing great free content like this. If you haven't done so already, please check out my Facebook page and Instagram account. And otherwise, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.